The preservation of the Developmental Biology film series was made possible by generous contributions from Distinguished University Professor of Geosciences, Lynn Margulis Terence Malick Chelsea Green Publishing The Politics and Practice of Sustainable Living The Hardy Lane Foundation The International Symbiosis Society Geobook Studio Publisher of The Biggest Picture Hummingbird Films Producer of the documentary Symbiotic Earth and supporters of the Lynn Margulis Archive at ScholarWorks. Here, seen under a microscope by time-lapse photography, is a pollen grain germinating with the resultant formation and growth of a pollen tube. The pollen tube provides a passage for the sperm cells down the style and into the ovary of the pistil where fertilization occurs. This pollen grain is from a flower of the plant Tradescansia. Pollen germination and growth can be studied by spreading pollen on a sugar-containing nutrient medium on a microscope slide. The pollen grains, which in Tradescansia are about 30 microns long, germinate within five minutes by extruding a tube. The tube grows very rapidly at rates greater than 500 microns per hour. Growth of the pollen tube is restricted to a zone of about 5 microns at the tip. During germination and growth of the pollen tube, the cytoplasm streams very actively. As the pollen tube elongates, the cytoplasm from the grain moves into the tube, leaving large vacuoles in the grain. The pollen tube, like the root hair, grows only at its tip, unlike most plant cells, which grow over their entire surface. This can be seen by observing that the distance between two bends in the tube, or a bend in the tube and the pollen grain, remains constant, while the distance between a bend and the tube tip increases. In the mature flower of amaryllis, when the anthers burst, pollen grains are liberated. 
The female part of the flower is the pistil, which consists of the stigma, the style, the ovary, with one or more ovules. Embedded in the ovule is the embryo sac, which contains antipodal cells whose function is unknown, polar nuclei, the egg cell, on either side of which are the synergids, which seem to function as nurse cells for the egg. In nature, pollen grains are transferred to the stigma, where they germinate and grow down the style. Similarly, the tube of a grain germinating in sugar solution increases in length. The cytoplasm, the vegetative nucleus, and the generative cell migrate from the grain into the tube. The vegetative nucleus is slightly ahead of the generative cell. In the sequence which follows, only the generative cell can be seen moving in the cytoplasm. Several hours after the start of germination, the generative cell divides, forming two sperm cells. When the pollen tube reaches the ovary, it enters the ovule through the micropyle, passes between cells of the ovule, and penetrates the embryo sac, entering one of the synergids. The tip ruptures in the synergid, and the sperm cells are released. When the sperm nuclei are freed from surrounding cytoplasm, one nucleus fuses with the egg nucleus to form the zygote. The other nucleus fuses with the polar nuclei to form the primary endosperm nucleus. Double fertilization is thus completed. <laughs>